Hi guys, um, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat and today I'm going to be doing a US book haul. So I went to the US for about two months um, in February and March and I went to a bunch of different states and these books are from Boston, Massachusetts, Los Angeles, California, Austin, Texas, and Greenville, Charlotte, South Carolina. So there are a lot of books to get to. I think there's 24 of them. And let's just get into it because um, I've been putting off making this video because there are so many books to talk about. And yeah, so I'm not gonna get that into them um, just for the sake of time and my own sanity. So the first place I wanna talk about is the book link in the Boston airport, uh, Boston Mass. Um, and I got two books there. So the first is My Absolute Darling by Gabriel Talent. Now I have read this book. This is a five star book for me. Um, I will leave my review of it down below. I read it a few years ago, I think. Um, I love this book. We are following a young girl named Turtle who lives with her father kind of in the backwoods of the Mendocino coast. And it is a very dark family tale. It's not for everyone, certainly. Um, but I just loved this book when I read it. And um, I'm slowly trying to buy all the books that I love again. So um, some of this haul is buying books that I have already read that I love and I can recommend to you guys. And then the other half of this haul is books that I wanted to find but haven't been able to find in Australian or um, Asian bookstores. So this is the first one that I got and I was really excited about this cover because um, I'm not a fan of covers that have people's faces on them usually. Um, so I really wanted to get this cover. Um, the, the other book I bought at that bookstore is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara, I believe is her name. And um, this one is really popular right now. It is a, the true life story of a journalist, uh, McNamara, who um, spent her life um, kind of trying to find the Golden State Killer in California. And she compiled all of this evidence and tracked down all of these leads. Um, and But then she died unexpectedly right before the killer was actually found. So I read this book really fast and I actually left it with my sister in Texas um, because she really loves like murder podcasts. So I figured that would be right up her street. Um, okay, so then the next store I went to was a huge thrift store in South Carolina. I don't remember the name of it, but I got a bunch of books for like basically nothing at all. Um, so um, I got On the Beach by Neville Shute. So this is um, a post-apocalyptic book about um, like the nuclear fallout um, from an Australian beachside town. Um, I think this is like considered a classic in post-apocalyptic fiction. Um, so I just really wanted to read it and I liked the cover. Um, it's kind of an older one. The newer cover that they had was like a bright red one, um, but I kind of liked the old beat up copies. Plus it was only two and a half dollars, so win. Um, I also picked up from the same bookstore, uh, The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers. Um, all I know is that um, this is about a woman's life and I don't know more than that. I just know that it's been on my TBR for a while and for $3, I figured I will get to it sometime. Um, and then I picked up another one that I have kind of no idea what it's about. It's called Loner by Teddy Wayne. So I had never heard of this before, but it follows a, a guy who goes to Harvard um, and he doesn't fit in. And I'm hoping that this is gonna take a dark turn at the end. Um, I hope that it's not just like a going to college story. Um, but I literally have no idea. But I saw it and the cover really intrigued me. It's kind of a cover buy for sure. And for $2, um, why not? Okay, um, and then two books that I really did have on my TBR and super wanted. Um, no Longer Human by Asamu Desai. So this is a young boy's alienation as he's growing up in Japanese society. Um, and this is a classic. I just have never read it before. Um, I wanted to get either this cover or the cover that's like the statue terming. Um, I know that that seems really strange to maybe people that aren't fussed about covers, but um, when you see certain editions, you know, you just want them in your life. <laughs> so this was one that I wanted for myself. I haven't read it yet, um, but I'm really keen to get to it. 
Um, another one was The Census Taker by China Nieville. Um, this one I have read, and I think I gave it three, three and a half stars. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of in a love-hate with Nieville because his, his stories never make sense to me, and the plot never really wraps up. It's always really vague and ambiguous, but his writing, though, is beautiful. Um, and dark and creepy. So this, I'm gonna keep it for sure, even though I wasn't in love with it. Um, we're following a child whose family is disintegrating and they live up in the hills above this town in a world which had big wars and kind of machines have disintegrated. It's a very creepy, creepy story. Um, but it just felt unfinished to me, but I can't get it out of my mind. It's one of those books where like, you don't want to like it, but there's something like that just has your attention, if that makes sense, so. So the last one that I got from that used bookstore is Twice Bitten, Love in Vain, Tales of Vampire Erotica. Now, <clears throat> this is not my normal, like what I would read. The reason I got it is because it's edited by Poppy Z. Bright, and Poppy Z. Bright is my favorite horror writer. Um, of all time. So I have been on the lookout for some of their books and when I saw this it was in it was in the erotica section but I thought I would give it a go and I've read that much of it and I think that it's mistitled. It's not love in anything. It's a lot of blood and it's a lot of needles. So uh, I don't know if I will be reading this or if I will just skip around and see if Poppy Z. Bright wrote anything because honestly there was one chapter that I just had to be like, nope. <laughs> so I put it down and I have not picked it back up. Um, it might be too much for me. Okay, um, and then after that um, I have one book. We went to like this private bookstore that's in a house. It is the most gorgeous bookstore of all time. Like it is gorgeous. It's like in this white two-story older manor house and it has like a winding bookcase and I wish I had pictures but I probably do but mm. anyway um I got Your Heart is the Sea by Nikita Gill so this is a poetry collection um which is based thematically around the ocean and I've just been really really wanting to get to it oh okay it's called um Joe's Place Bookstore thank goodness for the bookmarks um yeah but I have been really wanting to get to it, but the last two poetry collections that I've read, uh, I did not like. So um, I'm a little nervous. I because I don't want to read it and then like hate it and then be like, mm. uh, yeah. So I'm kind of hesitant, kind of looking forward to it. I've never heard about it before. Um, it, it was a local author, so they're from South Carolina, whoever they are. So next is um, some books that my aunt gave to me. So they're from South Carolina because that's where she's from. Uh, the first one is The River Widow. I'm just going to pop it up here. Um, I really didn't like it, actually. Um, I think I gave it two stars, and I have already unhauled it, so I don't have it anymore. Um, and then another one she gave me was Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. This book is everywhere for good reason. I really like this book. Um, we're following someone um, who is known as the Marsh Girl, and she doesn't really fit into the bayou uh, culture. She prefers to stay at her shack. And as a child, she's largely abandoned and left um, kind of forgotten by her family. And she exits out a living um, selling bivalves and fish, uh, smoked fish uh, to local boatmen. Um, and it, one day a murder happens and people think that she did it um, just because she kind of doesn't fit in. Um, I really love this and it really makes me want to go on like a tour of the bayou or camping along the bayou. Um, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Um, so thanks to my aunt for this one. Um, my aunt also gave me The Tattooist of Auschwitz and I know that this is going to be probably amazing and I know that it's going to make me cry a lot, which is honestly why I haven't picked it up yet. Um, it is like kind of a shorter novel, but um, I just know that it's going to make me sob like a little baby. So haven't picked it up yet. All right, and then the next one I have is from the LA airport, the Hudson Booksellers. Um, I had a super long layover there, like, I don't know, 15 hours or so. It was forever. Um, so I bought... The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. I had every intent to read this book, 
which is a retelling of Frankenstein from the point of view of Frankenstein's wife. If that doesn't sound amazing, I don't know what does. I had a 15 hour layover, so I was intending to read it. Did I read it? No, I didn't. I fell asleep. I'm really looking forward to this. Again, this is one that I'm so highly anticipating that I am nervous to read it. Um, this was on my five star predictions list and I just love Frankenstein retellings probably the most. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this one. And then after that, I flew down for a month with my little sister. Um, and throughout that month, as you can imagine, I went book shopping quite a lot. So I have four different bookstores to talk about. Um, the first one I went to was South Congress Books. Um, and I will just tell you right now, something so traumatic happened to me in that bookstore. So, I mean, I don't know why I was being a crazy person, but I was going through fiction from Z to A instead of A to Z, and when I got all the way up to B, which is where Poppy Z. Bright lives, a man steps in front of me, reaches out his hand, and takes the book I was looking for. If I had gone from A to Z, I would have got the Poppy Z. Bright book, but instead, it was taken right in front of my eyes. I was like flabbergasted. I was shook. It was a problem um, because I panicked and I said, oh my God, that book is so good. Um, and then the guy's like, oh yeah, really? I've been looking for it everywhere. And I was like, me too, in my mind because I'd already said I'd read it. So then I couldn't take it back. It was like that time when you're really panicked and like your mouth just says things that you're later like, what, what? Like I should have asked him if I could have it. I should have asked to like pay more for it, but I was just too like panicky that anyway, I did find a book there that I did actually buy. So hooray for that. Um, it's In Praise of the Stepmother by Mario Vargas Llosa. Um, and I have read this and I'm not sure if the review is up for it yet or not. It's in one of my wrap ups. Um, this is a bizarre, surreal novel where we are following a young boy who kind of has a fixation on his stepmother and interwoven into this story is reimaginings of what happens in classical paintings. So like this, which is Athena bathing, it talks about what's going on in the scene and the scenes mimic what is happening with the boy and the stepmother. Um, and this is just a very odd, dark, surreal novel. <laughs> so um, I do actually really love uh, Vargas Llosa and I will be reading more. I recently bought another of his books, so um, I'm keen to try it out. So another bookstore I went to with my mom was Malvern Books. I bought four books there. One I really loved, two I did not like, and one I haven't read yet, so it's a mixed bag. Um, so I got why God is a Woman by Nan Andrews. This is a poetry collection that I was not fond of at all. Um, it reimagines um, an island nation that is matriarchal where all of the women are kind of these beings that are put on pedestals and all of the men have wings and are kind of uh, subjugated. And it's a direct, you know, metaphor for our modern society just switched didn't really like it. I gave it two stars, I think. Um, yeah, so that was a bit disappointing. Um, another one that I didn't get on with is Don't Call Us Dead by Denez Smith. This is a poetry collection about uh, growing up gay and black in America. And um, I think it's just poetry, man. I think that um, I have a very particular poetry taste and uh, I think that I just have, am really unlucky with poetry. Um, so this one, um, I gave three stars, I think, three and a half stars. And um, some of the poems I did get, a lot of them went completely over my head and the style just wasn't for me, unfortunately. Um, okay, and then I got A Planet for Rent by Yoss, which if you guys have seen um, my wrap up for this one, this was kind of amazing. It reimagines, um, so the takeover of Cuba and the kind of colonialization of Cuba, um, it reimagines it as if the earth is being taken over by alien species, um, which sounds bizarre and it totally is bizarre, but in the best surreal way. Um, think instead of a complete book, Think of this as a collection of short stories and it will blow your mind. Yoss's imagination is like 
just amazing. Um, I also recently bought another Yoss book that I cannot wait to get into. Um, yeah, so I really loved this and I got it from Melvern Books. And the last one that I picked up from Melbourne Books, um, I haven't got to yet. It's Lion Cross Point by Ma Masatsugu Ono. Um, and this one is following a shy, traumatized boy um, who moves to an island city where you don't know what exactly has happened to him, but it said um, he needs to overcome his shame, anger, and sadness. Um, so, very ambiguous, seaside town and Japanese author I've never read before, an amazing cover. I'm here for all of this, and I just could not not get this book. Like, look at that gorgeous cover. Another bookstore that I went to with my sister is Bookwoman, also in Austin, Texas, and it is a, I believe, uh, woman-owned a uh, queer bookstore. So many of the books in the bookstore are focused on queer literature, um, which is why I was able to pick up um, If You Could Be Mine by Sarah Farzan. So I've been looking for this forever. This was a recommendation from Jen Campbell about two girls who are in love with each other in Iran, where it is forbidden to be um, in love with the same gender. However, um, one of the partners is considering getting a sex change in order for it to be legal so that they can marry each other. Um, and this book was very unique. It was, I hadn't heard of like most of any of the things in here. Um, kind of the queer subculture and the queer like hidden underground culture in Iran. Literally had no clue about that. So this one was a great one that I found. Um, also in there, I picked up The Seas by Samantha Hunt. This I have loved. It is also a very bizarre um, book about a girl who believes that she is a mermaid and that her father is Poseidon. She has some sort of probably mental disorder or something that makes her view reality differently. Um, you're never quite sure and they don't really say what it is exactly. Um, so you're never sure if what's happening is happening and it's kind of, it gives like a surreal light to everything. And the ending was amazing. This book just kind of came out of like left field and it, it's very haunting. I loved it a lot. And also the cover is just amazing. So the last book that I got in uh, Book Woman is this edition of Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. I got this for my husband actually. Um, he's a huge Neil Gaiman fan and also um, like Norse mythology. I just couldn't pass up this cover so I got it for him for his birthday um, and he just finished it today and he said it was really great. So I will probably also be picking this up at some point um, in the near future. So yeah. Okay. Okay, and finally, down to the last bookstore. So the last bookstore is Half Price Books, also in Austin, and um, it was amazing. I spent hours and hours there. I'm pretty sure like my sister had the patience of a saint because literally hours. Um, so the first book I got is Heartbreaker, which I had read in February, I think, and I picked this up because I had loved it so much. So this was one of the most surprising, bizarre reads of the year. Um, you're following a cult that is kind of stuck in the 80s. So it was founded in the 1980s and so everything they have, the cars, the clothes, the music, is from the 80s. Um, and we're following a main character whose mother suddenly drives off into the night and goes missing. And no one ever leaves um, kind of the cult reservation, so the girl is trying to find out where her mother went. Uh, so the first third is narrated by a girl, the middle by a dog, and the last by a boy. It is truly bizarre, truly unique. <laughs> Never read anything like it, and um, it's one of my favorite cult books, I think, of all time now. So uh, yeah, had to pick that up. Okay, and then the last two are really, really dark. So uh, this is Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright. So Poppy Z. Bright isn't in much, uh, you can't really find Poppy Z. Bright easily in bookstores anywhere. Um, I'm not sure if they're out of publication or what, but this one I actually read while I was backpacking through Thailand with a friend of mine. Um, and I read it on a night train and I was terrified. So this is following 
a serial killer and an accomplice who decide to murder a young runaway boy. So it's very dark, very gruesome. It is like super ultra dark, like one of the I had to put this book down multiple times. So if that is not your cup of tea, just like go ahead and skip right over this one because um, not much sunshine to be had. Um, and the last one that I picked up from that bookstore is um, Gold Rush by Mary Yu. So I was actually looking for another one by Mary Yu called Ueno Tokyo Station. Um, and instead I got Gold Rush, which won the Aka, Aku Tagawa Prize. Aku Tagawa Prize. Um, but I tried, I started to read this and I got this far through. Um, this book is like the belly of the beast, really dark. This is like, if you've ever read Almost Transparent Blue by Ryu Murakami, who's another one of my Japanese horror writers that I love. Um, very dark, very depressing. And um, <laughs> I've been trying to read books that are not super depressing just because um, I've had a bit of a rough time lately, so I'm trying to read books that at least have some happiness in them. Uh, and this book has no happiness. It's all, all very dark, which I should have known from the cover. And also, um, it says that it is a Japanese version of American Psycho, if uh, that makes you feel anything at all. It's basically about a boy who is raised and his father is um, the head of the gang who runs a gambling joint as well. He decides to murder his father and take over, but things don't go as planned. Um, yeah, very dark. So um, I will be trying this and picking it up again. I just think I need to maybe read it on a very sunny day or something, like when there's cookies and candles and bunnies hopping by. Those are the 24 books that I got in America. Um, I've been waiting to do this haul just because it was a lot, um, but I hope that you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button. That would be awesome. Um, let me know if any of those sound interesting to you. I know that a bunch of them maybe you do know, but then I hope that there's a bunch that you didn't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so I'm just going to say bye for now. I hope that you're having an awesome day, and I will chat to you later. Bye!